this is what you get when you overwinter or perennialize your peppers. The real key to doing this is I, I took this plant. So imagine this was a first year plant and I chopped the roots down to about six inches to where there was just that major stem and maybe one or two forks there. So about six to six to eight inches off the ground. And I dug it out. So I took my shovel and I dug it around about this big to get the major roots there. And then I washed them off in water because I didn't want any root or, or soil based pests that may overwinter uh, any like super big aphid bloom or anything there. And over, or, and then I washed off all the roots and then I set them in a bucket of water for about three or four days. And then those roots, you know, I could see, okay, they're really starting to ke catch back up. And then I planted it in more sterile potting mix, a kind of a soil there and just put them inside. I had some grow lights going, but they were very, they weren't like trying to get these things growing. It was just keeping them alive. And about, yeah, about six to eight weeks later, you could really start to see through in the middle of the winter, these plants really start to come back. Uh, and they looked like a really neat kind of, you know, what you would have an indoor potted plant. But for them, I just kept them going and actually trimmed them back a few times. Cause uh, by the time February, March rolled around, cause at the end of November is when I had to pull these up last year. Uh, you know, you had plants that were already growing, growing about a foot tall off the ground, uh, and that's just too tall to get them started, or if, or for my space. If you had the growing or grow the green uh, greenhouse space that stayed warm, or you had the grow lights. Um, but what I did was, as soon as our last frost kind of went out, when I planted my other peppers, I just dug a nice hole, planted it there with everything else. Last year, I took a Tabasco pepper plant that was about the size of this one. And this is about the, a fourth of the size of what my second year plant produced. But again, you can't, it, it's a good production. We've got great soil, plants grow amazingly in our homestead slash market farm. And, and this is great, but I wanted to see if I could overwinter this plant and produce something that was massive. Something that was, uh, what I've heard is the second year and even the third year of pepper production is way better than what you get the first year. And that is what I tested out with my last year's Tabasco pepper plants. To give you an idea, this plant is spanning about six foot wide and about four and a half feet tall without any staking. It is completely sturdy uh, and, <laughs> and it's produced and produced and produced. I have made probably close to four gallons of hot sauce from these delicious Tabasco peppers. And you know, I've just waited until, waited until uh, they've turned red and you can see how many green peppers are still left on there. Uh, and this is just one plant. I've got another one behind it, but these have produced amazingly, all from an experiment that I decided to try out this year. One last thing, and I know I'm gonna get questions on it, so here it is. Gabriel, why wouldn't you, even if you get more production, but why wouldn't you just grow a few more plants uh, in the spring so that, you know, it just, this seems like a lot of work. It seems like a lot of work, it seems like a lot of time, and I don't know if it's gonna pay off. Well, a few things. Number one, how much more work really is it? I would argue that it's less work than starting seedlings indoors. So hear me out, hear me out. I take this, our last, our first frost is somewhere around November. And so it's November 1st for all intents and purposes. So November 1st, I do this. I find a warmer spot where I have somewhat, somewhere of lighting. You know, it could be where you start your seeds. Um, and, and, and I don't plan on using much extra energy, if any energy. Um, but what I have here is that I wouldn't have already used. I'll just say that. What I have here is a plant that I can set there, just make sure it's watered, meaning that I'm probably gonna have to water it once every two weeks. Once every two weeks, I'll you know, get that. So November, and then I'm gonna plant this out in May. Seems like a long time, I get it. But if I'm starting seeds, I'm gonna have to start those seeds in our area. It's very common to start your pepper seeds in January or February. So what are you really only saving if you start your seeds? is about two months and the upkeep. Now I will start more pepper seeds, just the nature of our farm. Um, but what we're doing here, this, this is going to take literally no work at all. Water it once every two weeks, just make sure it's somewhat alive because when it starts warming up, I can bring them out to the greenhouse uh, in, in March when, we're, when, when the greenhouse protects us from some lower nighttime temperatures and then they'll really take off and, and they don't need much work because they're just like a potted plant that I will end up you know, planting into the ground. 
But if I'm talking about growing seedlings, those are gonna need watered once every couple of days. They're gonna need close to the lights to make sure they don't get leggy. I'm gonna have to baby them and baby them and baby them for months, like, like you have to do for pepper plants. And that's fine, and I plan on doing that this upcoming year. But what I have found with overwintering your pepper plants, making them perennial pepper plants, this is the most low maintenance way about going, doing it. And you quadruple your harvest. I mean, it's just, it's almost, un, it's almost unfathomable to even think about. Something like jalapenos, not that big of a deal. Something like Tabasco peppers, it's cool, and it is a big deal because it's neat, and I've shown you those, those images in the videos. Uh, but it's, you know, you still get a good harvest from, from uh, Tabasco peppers. But where the, you really get into the good stuff is talking about something like bell peppers. If you're growing first year bell peppers and you're not growing in a greenhouse, you're not growing in a hoop house, you're not growing uh, in an extremely warm, long, uh, lower moisture climate, which really narrows down where you're growing, what you're going to get is a lot of smaller green peppers that never ripen up. Or you get a few ripe peppers because you had to leave them on the vine for so long. But what you're going to get from doing a perennialized and overwintered pepper plant using bell peppers or sweet peppers is you're going to totally negate that first two months of the growing season where the plant's just trying to say, am I going to make it? Am I going to survive? Forget that. And then you start growing pretty much right away was my experience. And so that is where you can really, uh, if you're going to save anything, I would recommend doing it with the bell peppers uh, or something like the banana peppers or a sweet pepper, which do take a lot longer to start producing. Hot peppers, it's great, especially for the reason that, you know, we saved a lot of jalapenos because we, we eat a lot of jalapenos. We pick a lot of jalapenos. But something like a ghost pepper or a ghost chili pepper, instead of, which you're saving your seed, hopefully, so it's not an extra cost, but instead of worrying about starting seed and, and hot, hot peppers are pretty finicky with starting seed, I can take one or two of these plants from last year and grow them out to next year. And that's gonna be, it's gonna be 10 times more ghost peppers that we're gonna use. And so, uh, so that's helpful. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video uh, and I'm down again, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. We'll keep updating this perennial pepper, the overwinter pepper project, the overwinter pepper project. But uh, we love you. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you in another video soon.